Is this the best Z28 ever? Yeah, we'll take a look. This 1970 Chevrolet Camaro not only has the look, it's a highly original car, right down to the paint and low mileage on the odometer. Camaro was completely redesigned for 1970 and a half, and many people think that this year's Z28 was the best one ever. This particular car is an all original 22,000 mile example. So if you wanna see what these cars looked like when they were new, well, here's your chance. That was an interesting quote, considering it was said back in 1970, a mere three years after the first 67 Z28s rolled off the line. The 1970 and a half Camaro was a new design, now a bit longer than the first generation Camaro, and the automotive press was kind to it, for sure. The 67 through 69 cars were hard to beat, but this 1970 and a half car, well, it's got a lot going for it. Also new was the 350 cubic inch Turbofire V8 engine. This one made 360 horsepower, and in the Z28 it was buckled to a four-speed manual transmission, linked to a 411 rear gear, and Road and Track claimed that these things ran 1420s at 100 miles an hour in the quarter mile. That's moving for a car this size with a small block. The LT1 engine recipe sounds similar to what a hot rodder would build at a race shop. 11 to 1 compression ratio, solid mechanical high lift camshaft, oversized valves, an aluminum intake manifold fed by a 780 CFM holly carb, all atop a 4 bolt block made this a true small block rocking machine. It was good for 360 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque, just a few horsepower shy of the big block 396 of the day. A Hurst shifted four-speed was standard, but the LT1 made enough torque that Chevy thought it would be okay to offer an automatic transmission for the first time in a Z28. Z28s stayed close to their Trans Am racing heritage, with suspension upgrades including an oversized one-inch front sway bar, stiffer front coil springs, and heavy-duty rear leaf springs. Matching tuned shock absorbers helped keep everything under control, and other Z gear included 15-inch wheels and tires, as was a quick ratio power steering box. Pause attraction hooked the wheels together, while the 411 gears spun themselves silly. This Hugger Orange Z is showing just over 22,000 miles on the clock, and it's wearing its original Hugger Orange paint with black stripes and a black vinyl top. The sleek exterior of the new Camaro is racy and tight, with the low sloping rear glass and no rear quarter windows. We dig the short rear spoiler on the car too. This one is not an RS car, so it has no split front bumper and nose extension, but it still looks great. We also really like how the hood stripes point towards the big open mouth grill. A Chevy Camaro ad claimed the Z28 separated the men from the toys, by which they meant that it wasn't just an appearance package, this thing had real muscle under the hood. And we're pretty sure that there are plenty of women who would have had just as much fun with this car. The interior of the new Z28 was more cockpit-like than the 69 cars, and the high back buckets have a cool but very small checkered pattern in the seat covers. A simulated Burlwood dash displays the small fuel, amp, temp, and time gauges with a 150 mile an hour speedo and 8,000 RPM tack front and center. An AM radio sits below the heater and vent controls because Z28s could not be ordered with air conditioning. The full console wears more burl trim and houses a chrome balled her shifter that's sure to get mighty hot on sunny days. So is it the best Z28 ever? 
Those words were spoken in 1970, and perhaps it was a candidate at that point. Today's Z cars are amazing machines, but which do you like better? You know, the Brothers Collection is always seeking out clean examples of cool muscle cars, and this low-mile Z28 is a perfect example. And subscribing to our channel updates you just as soon as our new episode hits the streets. So go ahead and push that button to set yourself up, and we'll see you on the next lap of Muscle Car of the Week.